Good morning, everybody. It's so great to see everyone here this morning. Uh, it, I like this arrangement. It's fun. It makes it feel wider for some reason. I don't know what it is, but it's great to see you. Come on in. We're happy everyone's visiting online as well, and let's stand and let's sing together. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody.
Good morning, everyone. And good morning to those joining online. As Lucas said, it seems wider in here, and there's more people, which is good. So uh, just a few announcements today. So hello, summer, even though it might not feel like it. uh, We are changing to our summer programming here, which means that uh, on Wednesday nights, there won't be any more suppers, there won't be any more kids' blasts, Crew 56, and Wednesday night. Like I said, just for the summer, so it'll pick back up in the fall. Uh, however, some things will continue. So Sunday school will continue until May 21st, and crew, which is grades 12 or 7 through 12, will continue to meet on Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock. There will be more Bible study opportunities, so just make sure you're looking at the announcements for when those will pop up in the summer. This past Wednesday was our derby night, and it was a huge success. There was a ton of people here. You could just feel the energy. The kids just get so into it. It's always fun every race when we count down three, two, one, and the kids get louder and louder each time. I don't know how they still have their voices because I lost mine after like two of those. Uh, So I just want to say thank you for all of those that helped during the prep night, the race night, uh, all the prep that went into getting the track set up. And we just look forward to uh, next year when and uh, the next Derby and uh, the Wednesday night programming, like I said, that'll ensue back in the fall. So you can see behind me that there's, there's been a lot of pictures over the past few weeks. Just also want to have a special thanks to Pastor Dan for all the fun being the racetrack starter and, uh, and just thanks for all the kids that participated and wanted to try their car one last time after the, after the event was over. There are many more announcements and updates within your bulletin. If you have a prayer request, there is a brown box in the back below the sound booth. You can put your prayer requests in there. Those get prayed for every Tuesday. And you can also put your offering in there. If you want to, don't, if you want to give online, you can give at the website, which is unitedcovchurch.org, and you can click online giving. Make sure to sign your attendance pads. And if you're on the ends, make sure that those just make it to the middle so we can track attendance. Uh, At this time, you can stand up and greet your neighbor. Jesus. 
Jesus' name, just like Lazarus, oh, you brought me back to life. No longer I who live, but Christ in me, for I've been born again. My heart is free. I'm not worthy I'll point an empty grave towards the end when it gets into um, talking about the day of resurrection when we get to stand and sing uh, with all the heroes of the faith and knowing that um, the promises of God uh, through Jesus Christ are true and that's that day will come and that uh, all it takes right now is repentance of our heart and faith that God will do what he says he does because God is faithful.
the heroes of the faith. With one voice, a thousand generations sing, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And on that day, we join given our lives to you decades ago or yesterday or even have yet to make that choice there will be a day when when you come again Jesus and we will get to meet you face to face and the promises of just raising a mighty roar with a thousand generations is so exciting and can be so fulfilling to our souls and we just thank you so much for that prom promise and and everything you've done for us and will do for us. Amen. Our first reading today is from Psalms 121. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Our second reading today is from Acts 17, 10 through 12. That very night, the believers sent Paul and Silas to Berea. When they arrived there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. And the people of Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica. And they listened eagerly to Paul's message. They searched the scripture day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. As a result, many Jews believed as did many of the prominent Greek women and men. Okay, thank you, Ryan. All right, well, this really it does look different, you know, from up here, but it's great. I like it. I hope you like it. I don't know. Different, right? Yeah? <laughs> Some people are like, oh, yeah, I love change. Other people are like, I can't stand it. But, but it's, anyway, it's fun to, to be up here and see it from this perspective. And anyway, so we have much to praise God for and, and thank the Lord for the sunshine, right? Praise God for that. And um, so, um, <clears throat> of course, Leah and myself and several others um, were at the at um, my son Isaac's wedding last week, and so I just want to praise God for that, and 
Um, so good. So Isaac and Ellie are now married. And so um, have to, it was a very beautiful wedding and um, continue to pray for God's blessing there. And we need to keep praying for um, Leslie Ann Schellinger. And that's, by the way, that's Janet's daughter and Heather's mom who broke her femur. Um, but thank God she is improving. But we're going to continue to pray for healing there. And, and then um, for Luke's, Lu Lucas's mom, Luke Carlson's mom, Verleen, down in Kansas, she's having um, uh, the, like, how would you say it, Lucas? Okay, so there's blood pooling or collecting, causing headaches. She is going in tomorrow, and so we're going to pray that God will will heal her and and just for a total deliverance from that thing. Does anybody else have something that they feel that they want us to pray about today? Does anybody have something or maybe to praise God about today? Grandma Anthony is finally going to be released from the military tomorrow and will come live with his wife. <laughs> wow. Good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> wow. That's beautiful. Well, we're, we've been praying for that one for a long time, so very thankful. All right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Esther's teacher um, broke her meniscus. You can't break your meniscus, but you understand that she needs some surgery or had it, but we're praying for healing. Okay. All right. Maggie is her name. There was somebody else that was saying something that, yeah, way back there, Del. So thankful for that. Okay. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer then. And Father, we do have much to be thankful for. And thank you for protecting Bert and Dolly and Amy last week. And God, we praise you for that. We thank you for Isaac and Ellie and their marriage and wedding. And God bless them as they start out in life together. Thank you so much, Lord. And Thank you, God, that Anthony is able to come home and bless Anthony and Ruth, and we just say thank you, Jesus. God, we do um, pray for um, uh, Esther's teacher, Maggie, that, that had this uh, knee issue, several things, and, and th God, we pray healing in Jesus' name, and we pray, Father, for, um, for Les Leslie Ann Schellinger. Lord, bless her. And continue to heal her femur as it heals. God, we pray for Lucas's mom, Verlene. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, God, for healing. And we pray that you'd bring her through this and that she will be set free and delivered from, from this issue with um, the blood pooling, you know, on her, um, in her head. Lord, we pray for healing in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for our our government and our country. Lord, we need revival. We pray, God, Holy Spirit, for um, brothers and sisters in Christ all around the world. Bless them. And I know I'm forgetting a whole lot of stuff here, but God, we just lift all these things, that, along with everything that that is on our hearts today, Lord. We just pray we commit those to you, but we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, um, we are going to continue in um, 
in the book of Acts. And so now it's been because of Easter and, and all kinds of different things. Um, we've been kind of away from it for a little while, but the last we were in it, um, Paul and Silas, had the Holy Spirit had led them to go and proclaim the good news. And so they were led uh, to a place called Philippi, a town called Philippi. And that was, that's actually in Europe. And so they brought the gospel into Europe, and, and they had a lot of persecution, a lot of, you know, hardship and opposition and so forth, but, but they were able to um, bring the gospel there. And so people were coming to Christ, there was a church planted, and so really it was a successful uh, mission. And so... Um, so praise God for that, and they made it through, and, and then so now we're in Acts 17, and, you know, and I was thinking about this, you know, when, when they brought the gospel to these places, if you were able to, you know how you look at, say, a, uh, you know, a picture of the United States or some other part of the world, like a night picture, you know, and it shows you the lights, you know, and and um, obviously the places that are populated have brighter lights because there's more electricity. You know what I mean, right? A picture, and you look up in Canada and there's nothing, you know. But um, that's why I love Canada, by the way. But n not that I don't love people, because I do love people. But anyway, just to say that when you look at that picture that you see, you know, lights like that, and if you were to, to look with the eyes of, of, the, of the Holy Spirit, you know, when you look at a community, um, you think about it, when before Paul and Silas brought the gospel there, there's no light there, right? It's totally dark. But when they left there, there was the gospel, there was a church planted, there was life, there was life, right? And the Lord said, let there be light. And so God is all about bringing life and light into the world. And, you know, as a pastor, not just as a pastor, but as a Christian, you know, I, I come into this gathering and I just can feel the, the, the light, you know, the light of Christ. Anybody else feel that? I don't know, is it just me? You just kind of, you can feel the life here, right? And that's the, it's, it's the life of the Spirit. And God is moving. And so when God looks down from heaven with his wisdom, he sees not just physical light, but he sees the, you know, there's light here, there's life here. And, and so anyway, when, when, when um, Paul and Silas were bringing the gospel, they're, they're bringing light into those places that never had it before. And so we read on into verse seven, chapter 17, verse 1. Paul and Silas then traveled through the towns of Amphipolis and Apollonia and came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. Okay, so the Jewish synagogue. They would, that, that was kind of their pattern they'd always first look for the Jewish synagogue because the Jewish people were the folks that had um, a knowledge of the one true God, obviously, right? They, and they had, um, they were also waiting for the Messiah as a people. They were waiting for the Messiah. There was, and, and the other thing about them is that they had the scriptures. They had the Bible. And, um, and so there was a point of reference. So Paul and Silas could go there and say, hey, guys, guess what? We, have, we know the Messiah. We've met him. And we're here to tell you that he has come. You don't have to wait anymore. So they'd first go to the synagogue. Um, and verse 2, as was Paul's custom, he went to the synagogue service. And for three Sabbaths in a row... He used the scriptures to reason with the people. He explained the prophecies. Okay, anyway, so he, 
he reasoned with the people. Now, if there was anybody that was equipped to go and proclaim the or open up the scriptures to these people, it was Paul. Because, and we don't say this a whole lot, but Paul was among probably the top scholars of his day, okay? Paul had, um, he had one of the finest educations that anybody could have in the scriptures. He'd been trained under a very famous rabbi named Gamaliel, and um, so Paul was a lifelong you know, student of the Bible, and not to mention that Paul was brilliant, okay? Paul was very, very, very intelligent and knew the scriptures, probably had a lot of them memorized even. And so as he's there for three Sabbaths in a row, used the scriptures to reason with the people. He explained, to the, he explained the prophecies and proved that the Messiah must suffer and rise from the dead. He said, this Jesus I'm telling you about is the Messiah. Okay, he didn't say, I think he's the Messiah, or we think maybe, maybe he is. No, he said he is the Messiah. And, and by the way, Paul had a testimony to go with it. You know, he'd actually met Jesus. He knew him personally. And so he says he is the Messiah. This Jesus I'm telling you about is the Messiah. Some of the Jews who listened were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas along with many God-fearing Greek men and quite a few prominent women. Okay, so, so what does this mean? Well, it means that a church was planted in that community of Thessalonica. And, and there were some that believed, that accepted Christ. And, and so as we talk about starting a light in that community, all of a sudden going from pitch black to, you know, now there's the gospel, now there's a church planted. Okay, but some of the Jews were jealous, so they gathered some troublemakers from the marketplace to form a mob and start a riot. They attacked the home of Jason, searching for Paul and Silas so they could drag them out to the crowd. So this poor Jason, who is he? Well, he's, he's just this guy that is hosting Paul and Silas in his home. And they, they, this mob wanted to drag out Paul and Silas, probably, you know, beat them up or kill them or something. But not finding them, they dragged out Jason and some of the other believers instead and took them before the city council. Paul and Silas have caused trouble all over the world, they shouted. And now they are disturbing our city too. And Jason has welcomed them into his home. They they are all guilty of treason against Caesar, for they profess allegiance to another king named Jesus. The people of the city, as well as the city council, were thrown into turmoil by these reports. So the officials forced Jason and the other believers to post bond, and then they released them. So this poor guy, Jason, and the other believers, they had to um, you know, pay to get out of jail here. So they were being persecuted. Okay, well, um, you know, it's interesting that the trouble here starts with jealousy. They, you know, some of the Jews, as, as Paul was reasoning with them and explaining the scriptures to them, well, they couldn't refute what he was saying, right? They, but they were jealous because all of a sudden, Paul is winning people to Christ and and so this jealousy, that's, this thing that started with jealousy, turns into, into violence. And the devil, the enemy, you know, kind of fans the flame of this jealousy. And, and there's a spiritual principle to this oppression, right? There's, um, it just gets chaotic. And remember that the devil is the father of lies, and so one of the, his tactics is to just add lies to the whole thing and to say, well, hey, they're, they're going around causing trouble all over the world. Was that true? No. Do they, are they causing treason? 
No, but they're using the, these lie tactics to try to, to accuse. Remember, the devil is the accuser of the brethren, right? But we overcome him, right? By how? The blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, right? We overcome the devil. But anyway, so, so there's trouble here. And anyway, um, the Lord told, told us that we would have trouble in this world. That if we're going to stand up for Jesus, there's going to come a time when we're going to have some kind of opposition. And there's going to, going to be those that do not like it. John 16, 33, Jesus said this. He said, I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. Or some translations say you will have many troubles. Okay, you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome the world. Okay, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world, right? And but we're still going to have, we're still going to go through trials and hardships and troubles when we follow Jesus, and that seems to be just part of the, part of the package at times, and sometimes a whole lot worse than others, right? But we go through different seasons. And um, Second Timothy, this is what Paul writes to to Timothy. He says in verse thirteen. But evil people and impostors will flourish. They will deceive others and will themselves be deceived. Okay, so there's people out there that, that are truly blinded by the God of this world. In other words, Satan, right? They're blinded and they're deceived. They think that what is good is bad. They think that what is right is wrong so on and so forth, right? And they're just completely blinded. I mean, they're, they're not believe, they're, they don't, they're not able to discern the truth. And um, I have a, I have a friend that um, has this ministry in the cities, <clears throat> and he has kind of a newsletter with, or news. Um, little thing that he sends out on the internet, what prayer thing, whatever, you know what I mean. How do, what would be the words for it? It's not a letter, it's not paper, but it's, yeah, you know what, I, what I'm saying. Anyway, so, <laughs> but he, um, that's beside the point, I'm getting off here, but the, the point is, is that he, uh, okay, so he sent this prayer request out because in um, North Minneapolis at this place called the Loring Elementary School, they were having a gender awareness fair for the children. Boy, isn't that nice, huh? <laughs> and they had this psychologist come and teach the children to explore different, you know, maybe they want to transition into something else, and so on and so forth. And and then they were going to have a transvestite to uh, read stories to the children. Is that a good idea? No, it's not. You know, it, it, we don't, our kids don't need that. And, um, but anyway, so my friend got several other Christians to go, and they, they were simply going to go and pray. They weren't going to go on to the school. They didn't have signs. They weren't protesting. They didn't have any bull horns or anything. To, you know, they're just going to go walk around the, on the public area and simply pray because they recognize that this is a spiritual thing, okay? And, and there's some spiritual blindness. And, and really, the people that are doing this, they, they believe that they are helping, okay? They really think, I don't know that, it, you know, they're... they're you could even say that in a in a bizarre way they have a a heart of compassion, but it's really misguided. And, and so they want to help the children 
but they're doing exactly the opposite thing that should be done. And so my friend and and his friend and his friends were praying and the security came out and was talking with them and making sure that it was you know that everything was safe and the security was nice to them but the press wasn't very nice to them and so um anyway they were my friend said that he received some opposition well you know what that's going to happen and isn't it bizarre that so i read this article in the star tribune and it's just a glowing report about this wonderful thing that's going on and meanwhile the 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 nice christian people are not seen as that great so it's 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 twisted and the truth beca- what's good becomes bad what's bad becomes good and and it's it's because the devil can deceive people and people can become blinded to what's real and before you know it people are doing things that they never would have even dreamed they would do and thinking things that they never even dreamed that they would think because when the devil speaks lies he's speaking his native language and so there's trouble and there's problems but god loves the people that are deceived by the way they are they are not our enemies they are the folks that his heart goes out to and when the lord looks down from heaven and sees the darkness he longs for the light to come into that place and for people to have the scales removed and then all of a sudden they're like oh i guess i was wrong it's like yeah but there's healing there's healing in jesus name there's restoration and there's god has the power to take anybody out of whatever kind of darkness they're in and give them light to see the truth and to come into the truth and to come into healing and restoration and to receive their true identity praise god praise god for that right praise the lord that god is a god of tr- he's he's the way the truth and the life and he wants to give us an abundant life and he wants us to live in the truth you know god loves us so much he wants us to come into the light and how much better it is that we don't have to stumble around in the darkness but he takes us by his gracious hand and brings us into the truth okay so let's go on with acts here so they had to get paul and silas out of there that very night the believers sent paul and silas to berea so they sent them on to the next town because they're like paul this is too crazy here you got to get out of here cuz you're going to get hurt so they sent him off to berea when they arrived there they went to the guess where they went to the jewish synagogue that's their pattern and the people of berea were more open minded than those in thessalonica and they listened eagerly to paul's message okay they were more open minded they didn't just you know throw out what he said but but they're like hey we want to hear what you have to say uh, some translations say that they were of a more noble character okay so they they listened eagerly to paul's message they searched the scriptures day after day to see if paul and silas were teaching the truth As a result, many Jews believed, as did many of the prominent Greek women and men. So once again we see that God is planting a church in that dark place. The light has come, the light of Jesus Christ. And isn't it interesting that God's pattern seems to be um it's it's not only for the Jews, but it's also for the Greeks as well. It's for everybody. Okay, it's for every culture and and people group and everything god loves variety um but when some jews in thessalonica learned that paul was preaching the word of god in berea they went there and stirred up trouble the believers acted at once sending paul on to the coast while silas and timothy remained behind those escorting paul went with him 
all the way to Athens. So once again, they had to get him out of there because they realized it was too dangerous. Then they returned to Berea with instructions for Silas and Timothy to hurry and join him. Okay, so um, the Bereans searched the scriptures to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. They, they were of a more noble character. And, you know, we, we must be very careful not to stray from the teachings of the scriptures because the, the Bible is the word of God. And remember that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And even though culture changes or times change or even technology changes, but truth is always going to be truth, okay? That doesn't change. And God's word remains, and it's true. Okay, so 2 Timothy, let's go back there again. 2 Timothy um, 3.13 but evil people and imposters will flourish. They will deceive others and will themselves be deceived. But you must remain faithful to the things you've been taught. So he's ta saying this to Timothy. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. Isn't it wonderful that we have trustworthy people to teach us the word of God, people we can trust? Um, you have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood. So in, in Timothy's case, he learned it from his mother and his grandmother and others that were around that taught him from childhood. You've been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. This is why it's important to read the Bible. Okay, so, um, you know, it, the Bible is living and active, okay? It's, it's, that's why you can read it one day and then read the same verse the next day, and God will, the Holy Spirit will convict you through it. And he's going to reveal truth to you through the word of God. And, and it's important for us. But you can tell when someone is going astray if they begin to cut out portions of the Bible and say, well, that's irrelevant anymore. No, it's the truth, and it doesn't change. Or if people add stuff to the Bible, don't be doing that. The Bible warns not to do that. And so um, we can't be adding stuff to the Bible. And, okay, so John 10, 5. Let me read this one here. John chapter 10 and verse 5. Okay, what does it say? They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Okay, so, so when you start hearing stuff that is contrary to, to the, the truth and to the will of God, if you have the Holy Spirit living within you, there's going to be a check in your spirit, and you're going to go, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound good, and there, there's not life in it, and you know it. So um, the Spirit and the Word work together, right? And you're going to, if someone starts telling you stuff that's off, teaching stuff that's off, if, you, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, um, you know, the Lord says that the sheep will not listen to the voice of a stranger. But we've got to be careful you know, we, we need to know what the Bible says so that we can discern what's good and, and bad, what's right and wrong. Uh, so 
his sheep will run from the voice of a stranger. Let's go back to 2 Timothy. Uh, we'll continue on chapter 4, verse 1. It's, it says, I solemnly urge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he appears to set up his kingdom, preach the word of God, be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Okay? We might live through a favorable time, and we might not live through a favorable time. It might, al might not always be popular to follow Jesus. And I think we just need to be ready for that. And I'm not here to cast a, a dark cloud over you here today, but I'm just saying that we don't know the times that are coming, and we need to be ready to follow the Lord even if it costs us everything, right? Jesus went to the cross for us. We have to follow him, even if it means trouble, even if it means that you might lose your job someday. And, and I've, I've often said this, but if I, start, if I get up here and start teaching stuff that's different from the Bible, it's time for me to lose my job, Right? That's why um, I have authority over me, which is the church. I can't just run around doing whatever I, you know, not that I want to do anything bad. I don't. I want to be right with the Lord. But, but you know what? Um, if I start to say junk, then it's time for me to go. And it's time for you to get someone else who's going to be true to the word. Amen. Amen to that. Praise God. Okay, so... Um, all right, where was I? Preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. We're all preachers, by the way. We all need to share our faith. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. That's the Bible. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. Okay, I'll, I'll just read a little bit more. As for me, and Paul is writing this when he's very old, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. And that's us. There's a prize awaiting for us. And so we're to keep, so what's the point of all this? Well, keep with the Lord, okay? Remain in him, stay close to him, read the Bible. And, and by the way, if, if you're saying, if, if you're here today and you go, well, I, I don't have a Bible. Well, guys, we have lots of them, and we want you to just, we want to give you a, a Bible, okay? If you don't have one, come and we'll give you one. Or just take one that's in your, this row, whatever. But we'll get you a Bible, okay? Here's the other thing. You might be here today and go, and you say, um, I would like to, I don't know where to really start with the Bible. It's kind of intimidating. I mean, it's, you know, well, we're going to try to have a, um, what were we calling it? Biblical foundations class. Susie, is that what it is? Foundations. Okay, so we're going to do that this summer. And if you're interested in that, there's a sign-up sheet in the Sign Up Central thing. And sign up, and we will give you some more info on that. Give it, put your phone number down or whatever, and we'll we'll be in touch with you. And um, but you know, we all have. Praise God that we, we live in a country where we have Bibles. Praise the Lord. And um, I had a, oh, here it is. 
I'm hiding from you. No. <laughs> anyway, it's cool how I can walk around with this mic. But anyway, check this out. It used to be that people might only have one Bible in their house. How would you like to carry this around? Like, <laughs> man, you'd be strong, you know. It's like, <laughs> but this, this is, uh, so, you know, a family Bible. People might used to only have one Bible in their home. How about that? This is an old Swedish Bible, Biblin, the Bible. And man, is that a, that a beauty. That thing is, could choke a rhinoceros, you know? <laughs> but well, what is the point? I, I can't remember. I just, you know what? I, I just saw this in the library. I thought it was so cool. It's from like 1870. And so when this church was founded way back then, it was a bunch of Swedes, and they brought their Bible. And, and this church is, is based on, you know, Jesus Christ is the, um, he's the, he's the cornerstone. But we're, this church is, is got good foundation, right? The Bible. And, and we're going to stay with it. Amen? We're going to stay with the Word of God, and, and we're going to keep following the Lord. And God is powerful, you know, and um, He's good, and He's alive, and He's moving among us, and we want to see more. We want to see those people come out of the darkness. Whatever kind of crazy darkness they're in, the Lord wants to bring them out. And so, um, if you're here today, and you say, man, I think I'm in darkness, and I want to come into the light. Well, we're here to help you, okay? And, and you can join us on the journey to the ultimate light, which is heaven, which is where the Lord Jesus is, and our Father, who art in heaven, right? And um, anyway, so if you're here today, and you go, I want to get out of the darkness, and I want to come into the light. I want to come to Jesus today. I want to start that walk with the Lord then we want to talk to you, we want to pray with you, and, and I will be up here, and there's also prayer available. I also think that today God is going to pour out some healing in Jesus' name. There's, I just feel that. I think God's going to pour out some healing. So, um, so in the library or down the hall in the prayer room, you can go there too. But let's just pray, and we're going to have the worship team come up as well. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious word. Lord, thank you that you are an unchanging God. Thank you, Lord, that you're the way, the truth, and the life. And God, I, we just pray, Lord, may we be true to your word. May we not stray from it, but may we be like those Bereans, Lord, who, who search the scriptures daily, Lord. They searched the scriptures because they were of a noble character, and they wanted to know what was true, Lord. They wanted to stay on the right track. And Lord God, they, they were um, such an example to us. God, you've given us Bibles. May we read them, and may we not just read them, but may we really apply it into our lives, Heavenly Father. And so we just pray that, Lord. We want to follow you, Jesus, and we thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Well, let's stand up and sing this one. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress. You are my portion, you are my hiding place, oh I believe you are the way, the truth, the light.
our time today with uh, praying the Lord's Prayer together. <clears throat> so let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and lead us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the Lord bless you this week. Have a great week.